Hello everybody, it's time to paint live. We do this every Tuesday. I'm Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. Today we're gonna to be painting this beautiful design, which I just realized I forgot to flip my camera so it's not backwards for you all. There we go. Let me mirror this one too. I'm live on TikTok and Facebook. <laughs> um, so there we go. Now you can read the words. So it's got a beautiful cardinal on a snowy branch and it says, hello. This design is in our shop. It's called the Hello Cardinal design. So you can get the printable template, which you can print out and trace on your own piece of wood using a, graph, a piece of graphite paper. And you can um, trace it and cut it out using like a scroll saw or a jigsaw, or you, it even comes with the laser cutting files to cut this on your laser machine if you own one of those, which is what I used to cut out my piece. So here it is. It's got the design already laser etched in the surface. If you're not, um, if you if you don't have a laser cutting machine or you're like scared of power tools, you can purchase the wooden blank from us as well. Um, it's for sale in there and you can get it up to 20 inches in size or as small as six inches. Uh, hello, Casey. Smile. <laughs> Shan's wanting a picture. There we go. We always like to get a picture of me with the wooden blank before we even paint it and sometimes we forget. Hi, Alicia, how are you? Hello, Marilyn, good morning. Um, but I, I kind of picked this design for two different reasons because we have five new designs that come out in our shop every Friday, right? And I always pick one to paint. Well, today I was like, ah, which one should I do? So I, I first looked to see which one was the best seller over the weekend, which one sold the most. And this little cardinal design was the top seller. So that was, I was like, okay, maybe I'll do that. Well, then I noticed there's speckles in the background of the design and I'm like, ooh, that would mean I would get to do splatter paints. So, <laughs> of course, I was like, yeah, we're painting the cardinal. Um, hello, Michelle. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> How is everybody today? Are y'all having a great Tuesday? I almost said Monday. It is not Monday, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for sprinkling the love. Yes, this is plywood. It's still got a little bit of sawdust on it, so I was dusting it off. This is uh, quarter inch revolution plywood. Now, if you purchase one from our shop, it'll actually be quarter inch um, MDF. Hi, Janet. Hello, Rochelle. Okay, we're gonna start by painting the background of this, and I wanna use, could you grab me another bottle of this right over there? This one's almost gone. Um, it's a color by DecoArt. It's an Americana paint. It's called Bahama Blue, and this bottle's almost empty because it's one of my favorites. Thank you, ma'am. That's the one you're painting right now. Oh, I would love to see how it turns out. By the way, I did put my text number down in the video description. So if you did not get a notification right before I went live, letting you know I was gonna go live and paint, you can get text notifications by texting that number. You can also send me pictures of your painted projects. So if you're painting this one right now, or if you paint it this weekend, I would love it if you would send me a picture of it. We've even featured some of your painted projects on our Facebook page here recently. So. Um, some of those were sent by text. Hello, good morning, Ruth. If you hear a little clicking sound, that's Shan with her uh, camera. She's taking pictures of me as I'm painting for our blog posts. Good morning, Judy. Hi, Debbie. Watching from Virginia. Susan says she loves that cardinal. How many of you guys love cardinals? Camilla, this blue is called Bahama Blue. I'm also going to go ahead and put a little bit of white here in my egg carton because I'm going to do a little bit of a shaded effect where it's darker around the edge and lighter in the middle. Um, it reminds you of your husband. Car Tiffany says they remind her of her grandma. <laughs> Susan says, I love cardinals. I've always loved them too, but they are the Kentucky state bird. So <laughs> is the color list with the template when you buy it? No. Um, if you want to get the color list, you just need to text the word list to the, to the phone number that I've put up in the video description. Um, and on, usually it's on a Thursday, we'll send out a text notification to that group letting you guys know when the, when the supply list is ready. I got a hair in my paint. <laughs> um, and we, we will let you know when there's a supply list available and you can go and um, download it. That way you've got it for a reference when you get ready to paint. I'm just painting the entire thing with this Bahama Blue. I'm also working with a slightly wet brush and if you notice that I'm painting over the lines, like over my cardinal and over the lines, that's on purpose. It's because it's much easier to, to create our background effect by painting the entire thing, this blue color first. 
and we can still see the laser etched lines through the paint, so there's no need to worry. If you're painting this at home using one of our printable templates, um, I would recommend actually going ahead and cutting this out, painting it blue first, and then putting the design on the wood using your graphite paper. So put the design on top of the blue. That'll make it a little easier for you. Instead of tracing the entire design on the raw wood, I would just do it on top of the blue after you've got your background color painted. Good afternoon, Laura. <laughs> it's actually still technically morning here. Um, you haven't watched me in a while. Well, welcome. Where will the supply list be posted? It's on our website, and when you text us, we'll send you a link to that to that supply list. But technically, the supply list doesn't get made up until until a day or two after my Facebook Live because I pick the colors out as I'm painting. So it makes it really difficult for us to make the list ahead of time if I'm picking them out while I'm painting. Not to mention, you know, artist prerogative here. I love to be able to change my mind. And so if I were to make up that supply list before I painted, it would make it really difficult um, to stick to. I'm gonna go ahead and just squirt some directly on here to save me some time and hassle. Going back and forth a lot to my egg carton. Dipping my paint in a little bit of water too to help that smooth that out. Good morning, Wanda. Hello, April. How do you get the template? Click the link above. I put the words Hello Cardinal up there. Um, so just click on the link right next to the words Hello Cardinal. By the way, Black Friday is coming up, guys. How many of you guys love to Black Friday shop, even if it's just online? We're going to have a big Black Friday sale coming up, and it's going to start on Thanksgiving Day, and it's going to go through Cyber Monday. So if you want to be in the know, and find out early what the deals are gonna be. We're gonna be announcing that, I believe, later this week for you guys. So you'll get to find out before anybody else what the deals are. And you'll be getting a free gift just for getting on the list. So you'll get something free from our shop just for getting on the list. Also, we decided today, we are gonna put together, we've never done this before, so I'm super excited about it. We, <laughs> Leah's laughing because she's the reason it's happening because she is like the list maker, spreadsheet maker, organized person um, on our team. And so she was able to come up with a printed checklist for you guys to download of all the names of the designs in our shop. And so that's going to make it super easy for you guys to figure out what designs you have, what designs you don't, because all you'll have to do is go through the files on your computer or your wherever you keep them and just check them off if you already have them. That way you'll have a list of the ones you do and don't have. That way on Black Friday when you get ready to shop, you'll know exactly what you need to add to your list. How do you get on the list? So you can text me um, at 270-207-9091. Um, you can also click the Black Friday waitlist link. I don't know if I've got it in my TikTok profile or not, but if you want to uh, DM me on TikTok, I will send you the link there. I forgot to put it in my bio. Um, you're excited about that. Carrie's excited about that idea. Everybody say, thank you, Aaliyah. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel says, Michelle says, that's awesome. Thanks in advance. Laura loves that idea. And only the people on the Black Friday wait list will get the printable checklist that you can sit and check off. So you have to get on the wait list in order to get it. Ruth says, I really need that. <laughs> it's going to be really helpful because you guys are going to want to buy a ton of templates on Black Friday. And you're going to want to know which ones you've got because you don't want to buy duplicates of ones you already have. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, when will the list for Black Friday come out? Um, I don't remember. It's later this week that we decided, but I hate to tell you in case I'm wrong because <laughs> I can't remember what we decided, but we talked about it in our meeting last Friday. Yeah, hopefully we can get it out this weekend. Okay, so hopefully by the weekend you'll have an email that will let you know what the deals are going to be. All right, I'm dipping in my white paint, and while the blue is still wet, I'm streaking some white in here to kind of add a little bit of a... A lighter effect through the middle. This only really works well if your brush is wet and the background is wet. So my background blue is wet and my brush is wet and I'm just kind of swiping in circles going different directions. I kind of want them all going in a swirly effect so that the center looks 
swirled with white. And I don't expect it to look perfect, but I do kind of want to blend it a little. Two of you that are slower. Okay, Shan says I have to move slower for her to get this swirly effect. <laughs> it's hard when you're taking pictures for the blog because you gotta um, make sure that the artist moves a little slower to get a good blog picture. She's giving me directions like a director. Smile. Smile for the pictures. I'm going to just let the rest of this kind of just streak out here to the sides just a little bit. That way it doesn't look like one weird white circle in the middle. And anywhere that it's like too streaky, I'm just kind of doing like a little swipe back and forth to kind of blend it. I want it to look a little snowy. And then we're going to splatter some white paint on here too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me hold it up and show you guys what we got. So here's our background. It's really swirly. We're gonna draw, uh, I started to say we're gonna draw this, but I don't think it's gonna matter if we dry it or not because I'm gonna do the splatter paint next. So we're gonna need some white paint with a little bit of water in it. Let me drip some water in my white. Then I'm gonna back up. <laughs> and Shan says she's gonna back up so I don't splatter her. So mix some water with your white paint. Get it nice and runny. And you're gonna need a toothbrush, but not the one you use all the time. <laughs> Hello, Mamie, welcome. You guys watching on TikTok? We got 115 of you guys watching live today, that's cool. We don't usually have that many. It's exciting. I'll rinse that off. I'll just drop it in there. Okay, so once your paint is watered down, Get it away from important things because we're going to splatter this. Drip, dip your toothbrush in your watered down paint. Get it nice and saturated. And then try to get a little bit of the excess off because we don't want it like dripping all over the place too bad. There's a couple different ways you can do this. If you want it to have more of a directional spray, you can use your finger. If you want it to just look like little drops, you can tap like this. And the, more, the, the first few drops that come off will be big. So just kind of spread those out. And then as you continue to do it, the drops are gonna get smaller. So I'm gonna actually start tapping harder so that those little bitty drops, my finger hurts, so that those little bitty drops will come off. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more. And if you don't want big drops, just tap it off in your egg carton. You can see the snow, isn't it looking pretty? Let me get back on the camera here. <laughs> Continue tapping, get as much snow on there as you want. Let's get a little bit more. It's hard to say when enough is enough because I really love doing this. It's like so fun and satisfying. Okay, I think that's probably enough though. Let me hold it up and show you. Look how pretty, we've got speckled snow. Now we're doing it first because I didn't want the cardinal to have snow speckled on top of it. I want to paint the cardinal on last so that it looks like it just flew in and sat on that branch and it's not covered in snow. Jamie says she's already loving it. <laughs> Lisa says I'm doing this with my snowman door hanger. Have any of you guys not tried splatter paint yet? Are you scared? Um, somebody said, where are you out of? I hear the country in your voice. <laughs> I'm from Kentucky. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> uh, I hang on, let me change. This is driving me crazy because I can't seem to stay on the camera in this one. So I was trying to angle it. There we go. Now I'm in frame. Once I mirrored the, the camera, it was hard to like stay in the camera frame. I kept moving my door hanger around. Thank you, Donna. Um, you can also use a large paintbrush instead of a toothbrush. Bobby says, hello. I've also see, seen people use, um, I think a fan brush maybe. Phyllis says she's scared. What's, what are you scared of, Phyllis? If you're scared, I want you to practice on an old Amazon Prime box. Just practice on some cardboard. That way you get the technique down before you do it on an actual door hanger. Um, let's do some happy mail. If you guys want to comment, Tell me, um, let's see, what should my question be? Who is your favorite reindeer? 
Dasher, Dancer, let's see if I can name them all. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, and Rudolph, of course. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Uh, Phyllis is afraid of getting a big splatter. Definitely practice on some cardboard. <laughs> Somebody said Blitzen. Somebody else said Dasher. <laughs> your first time was a disaster. Oh, no. Definitely practice on the cardboard. That will help. We're drying this really good because um, we don't want to mess our splatter paints up before we move on. What happened to Olive, the other reindeer? <laughs> I forgot about that one. Oh, that's so funny. We need a hair tutorial, somebody says. Um, I use a crimper, like a, a, crimp, a crimper in, to do this. And I don't know why it did not crimp good on this side. I mean, you can see a few waves, but like right here. I don't know. I like it bigger than this, but this is freshly washed, so it's not very, it's not as fluffy as I would like for it to be. Comet and Prancer. <laughs> Charlene says, go Kentucky. This has nothing to do with basketball. Painting the Cardinal in here does not mean I'm a Louisville Cardinals fan. <laughs> um, they are the Kentucky State Bird. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm not a Wildcat fan either, though. I know. Don't disown me. I'm a Murray State Racer fan. Shan, up. Shan's like, yes. Up. <laughs> Hooves up. Oh, that must be a new thing because they didn't say that when I was in school. Did you, you have Dunker? Did? Yeah, we had Dunker, but we never that, said hooves up. No, that that's a recent. Thing. Yes. Okay, happy mail winner is Miss Deb Dalton. Thank you for watching, Deb. If you will text us or sorry, email us your address, we will make sure to send you some happy mail. Hello, hello, uh, <laughs> Megan. I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, what is her name? All I could see was MC Southern Creations, and I blanked out on your name, and for some reason, it did not come to the surface of my, of my brain. Hi, Megan. Uh, Clarissa, I forgot about that reindeer. That was that was Rudolph's girlfriend, right? And <laughs> Gigi says, I really like this. Rudolph, of course, yes. Comment because of the Santa Claus. That's what our next question needs to be. Well, well uh, hang on, I've got an idea for my next question. We'll do some more happy mail in a little bit. Yep, me too. You've got an idea too? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same idea. Probably. <laughs> Um, is that a Thanksgiving shirt? Yes, it says thankful right across the bottom and it's got colorful, um, like rainbow stripes in, um, Thanksgiving colors. It was my framed, uh, monogram or my framed t-shirt of the month. I can't talk today, guys. I feel like I'm tripping over my words. Oh, Tammy said Rudolph because he overcame his fears. He was the underdog and Santa chose him to be the leader. I like that. You're itching to do a door hanger. What do you, what's holding you up? Do one. Paint with us. By the way, guys, I know this shape looks intimidating to cut. So what I'm going to recommend is if you have a round wooden shape, just paint it on a round. All you would have to do is extend the, the tree branch out just a little longer so that it goes off the edge of your door hanger. But this would fit on a wooden round perfectly. Deb used to have a home on Lake Cumberland. Nice. How do you get on the happy mail? You just have to be here, show up live, uh, comment, and we pick uh, three random winners while I'm painting live um, to win. What do you use to cut your wood? What's the best tool? So for years, I used a jigsaw. Jigsaw was the only tool I used. And then after I've been in business for a couple of years, I started laser cutting them. So that's what I use now. But if you're just starting out, a jigsaw is probably gonna be the easiest thing. Or a scroll saw. Lots of people prefer the scroll saw. I've just never personally used a scroll saw. <laughs> Thank you, LaDonna. You just cut this one out on Sunday. Can't wait to paint it. I'm getting hot using this thing. I'm like waiting on the paint to dry. I think it's probably dry enough now. Aw, Alicia's homesick. Where are you that you're not home? How do you do the background? I missed it. Um, Cookie, you'll be able to rewind it, rewind it and watch it, but essentially we painted it with Bahama Blue. While the Bahama Blue was still wet, we swirled in white in a circular motion because I wanted it to kind of look like the air was swirling. And then we splatter painted white with a toothbrush. So next, we need to paint our little branch for our bird to sit on. So we're going to pick out a color of brown. Let's see. Let's use... <coughs> this dark chocolate brown, and then we might shade on some white to make it look like snow or something. 
and you're going to need a smaller, like, flat tip brush to do this. Um, the brushes that I'm using are Deco Art brushes. You can get them right on the website. They're 30% off right now. I did put my link to shop on Deco Art up in the video description if you want to go check it out. <laughs> Shan's going, smile. Um, so if you want to shop for brushes, go on there and look for brushes. They're 30% off. There are several different brush packs. I really like the beginner's sets. They have just about everything you're going to need in them. And I think there's a coupon code. If you want to save, um, what was it, 20%, mm -hmm. you can use the code SOUTHERN, all capital letters, SOUTHERN20, to save 20% on DecoArt's website. You can use that on brushes. All their stencils are 70% off right now, too. They have some stencils that are really large for as low as like $2 and something. Really great deal. Um, what else are you live on? I'm on, I'm live on Facebook and TikTok. Arthritis in your hands makes the scroll saw easier to use. Oh, that's a good point. So if you have arthritis, she's recommending that you use a scroll saw instead of a jigsaw because it's a little bit more like using like a sewing machine or something. It's not as like jarring as using a jigsaw. So I'm painting the branch and then the bird sits in the middle. You guys can't see it because it's already been painted over, but I can still see the cardinal sitting here. So I'm not freehanding this tree branch right now. I am painting inside the lines on the wood. Matter of fact, I might even get it close enough for you guys to see. You can still make out the shape of the bird. See, it's kind of like a little ghost there in the snowy background. And you can see the little berries right down here. So I'm just painting inside the lines. It's like almost like paint by number but there's no numbers and there's no particular paint colors that it tells you. You're in Louisiana. Ooh. Raging um, Cajun. Raging Cajun, Chan says. What's the name of the site again for the stencils? It's Deco Art. Deco Art's paint website. Um, if you DM me, I can give you my affiliate link for it. If you're watching on TikTok. Although it may be in my link in my bio. I don't remember. Okay. I think I need to dry this and do another quick little coat on the tree branch. Don't you freehand your lettering. Sometimes I do. But um, sometimes I just use the, the letters that are already etched. Like this one has the word hello laser etched on the wood. And so I'll be just painting inside the lines on this one to do the word hello. Deco art. <laughs> Somebody's a deco what? Are you free handing your... Oh, I already answered that question. <laughs> Hello, PC sister. Lauren's excited to see this one. Hey, Lauren. Are you on your break? She's a teacher at a school. You must be on like your planning period or lunch break or something. Glad you were able to hop on and say hi. I saw, Lauren got to go do something really cool the other day. I saw on her Facebook, she posted that she got to go to a glass blowing shop and make a hand, hand like shaped, how, how do you say that? Glass blown ornament. Mm -hmm. It was like a workshop she got to go do. She got to pick the colors that they put in and everything. And of course she didn't do the dangerous part. Somebody else did that, but that sounds like so much fun course that's the perks to living close to a big city like Louisville Kentucky you get to go do really cool stuff like that we don't have anything like that in our little bitty town here I'm just painting a second coat on this brown real quick I may also get a little bit of black and add some little like streaks in the in the brown to make it look more like it's uh, not just a solid brown so I'm just gonna get a teensy bit on the corner of my brush and kind of streak that across the bottom of the branch like a shadow. And then just in some random little spots. Let me show you what I mean. You see the black? I just kind of put it, I put a tiny, tiny amount on the corner of my brush and I just streaked it through to make it look like um, the branch had some, some like imperfect spots in it. Let's do the same thing right here. The trick is to get like almost no paint on your brush. Like 
Just such, such a tiny, tiny amount. Because if you get too much at all, then you're going to have a black tree branch. If you're afraid of getting too much, maybe dip in it a little bit and then dab it off on like a piece of paper or a paper towel so that the excess is gone. There we go. So I did the bottom part of the branch also. Do you see that? It's got a little bit of variation, variety in the color. It always amazes me how you don't get paint on your shirts. Okay, so don't be so amazed just yet because last night or yesterday I was painting inside the painter's clubhouse and I had it all over me. Do I already have it on me? No, I think that's soot from the laser cut. We have a little bit of brown there, too. That might be makeup. <laughs> I get stuff on my shirts all the time. The trick, though, is um, I did get paint on my shirt yesterday when I painted live inside my Facebook group. Um, and I, as soon as the live was over, I took the shirt off and I took some rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush and I scrubbed it out, sprayed some spray and wash on it, tossed it in the wash, and now you would never know. By the way, somebody asked, how long have I been doing this? Um, I've had my painting business for seven years now. So, I've been doing it long enough now that I'm pretty comfortable with it. So, don't give up if you don't, like, suddenly, like, become a Picasso overnight. It definitely takes some time. you got to practice. But if you want some help, the Painters Clubhouse is um, my membership where we teach door hanger painting. And so, when you're ready, you can join the Painters Clubhouse and learn how to do this with me. Now I'm just taking a little round tip brush and I'm making the little, um, what do you, twigs, I guess, if you will, twigs that go out to the little red berries that are going to be on the ends of these little twigs. They kind of spider out from the end of the branches. Is it time to do some more happy mail? You're Let's do some more Happy Mail. You want to? More. Okay. So here was my question. Let's see if it was the same as Aaliyah's. My question was going to be, what is your all-time favorite Christmas movie? Oh, there we go. Was it, is that, is that yours? So what's your favorite Christmas movie, Aaliyah? Shan, think of yours too. White Christmas. White Christmas? I don't even know if I've ever seen that one. Oh, I know it's an old shame. one. It's like a classic. <laughs> I love It's a Wonderful Life, but I wouldn't say it's probably my favorite. No. No. Um, I think any Hallmark movie. Die Hard. Die Hard. Oh, it's me and my husband Christmas. argue. It is too. What? Okay, so Shan, my husband and I argue about this every year. He swears Die Hard's a Christmas movie, and I'm like, it is not. It's an no, action yeah. flick. It's not a Christmas movie. Yeah. He's like, it can be both. No. I disagree, but no, I know no, it's like a hot debate around there's here. There's one you're missing. There's one you're missing. Somebody else said Miracle on 34th Street. A no, Christmas a Story one. is my dad's favorite. No, they, they're not uh, really close yet. I think my favorite. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> that one's another Aaliyah's favorite. What's think, your favorite? I think a Hallmark Christmas specials. Yeah, but that's not one movie. That's like saying well, that channel's my all, favorite. But they're all kind of the same. Actually, that's true. Actually, isn't it 254 actors and 238 Basic women in one movie? Basically. <laughs> but they're uh, just, they just Frosty the Snowman. Do you classify Jack Frost as a Christmas story? I kind of feel like, yeah, it is. Yeah, Jack Frost is. <laughs> um, I, I kind of feel mm -hmm. like my favorite is probably the original Santa Claus. Like Tim, Tim, Tim Allen, the first one. No, I don't like the other ones, but the first one. Isn't Home Alone a Christmas movie? Kind of? Technically, yes. Technically, but I, I, uh, my kids really watch that one all year. It's got enough Christmas music in it that it it classifies as a Christmas movie to me. Like, the yeah. scene where he goes to the church. We're talking about Home Alone, for those of y'all who didn't catch it. The scene where he goes to the church and the choir is singing Hark How the Bells. Yeah. Like, that, to me, just makes it Christmas. Yeah. Like, when you watch that scene, so. See, it's hard because I don't watch that many Christmas movies. I watch more Halloween movies Halloween than anything. Movies. <laughs> uh, we love Halloween movies, too. Um, this color that I'm using, because oh, I got distracted, is Grandma, called Tomato Red. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Is that a movie? Is yeah. Movie? No, no, it actually is. It actually is. It's on Cartoon Network. I used to watch oh, it Oh, it's a, a cartoon kid. Christmas oh, movie. I yeah. do kind of remember that. It's good. Okay. This is Tomato Red. It's a nice, deep red color. I'm using it to paint the little berries. Um, I also used it because I knew it would cover on top of this blue really well. If you ever have trouble getting red paint to cover something, if you will paint a shade See, of gray underneath your red, it will create a nice like primer coat that helps your red to 
to be more um, opaque. Damn, I see. <laughs> I think I did watch that as a kid at least once. It's good. Somebody else's book grandma got ran over is better for You're not yes. the only one, Shan. Yes. <laughs> you love oh. The Grinch with Jim Carrey. My kids love that. They could watch that on repeat. That and Home Alone. And Krampus. Oh, Krampus. Oh, no. <laughs> I've never seen that, though, so I can't really say. Jesus. Who's our winner? Who's our winner? We Our winner is... Connie Lee Smith. Congratulations, Connie. Send us an email with your address so we can send you some happy mail. We'll pick one more happy mail winner um, toward the end of the door hanger when we get done with it. I've got to think of another great question to ask. <laughs> can a PC sister join the template club? Absolutely. And you can save 20% on your template club subscription. Uh, what was that question about something about the lines? It disappeared on my screen. It was on Facebook. Somebody on Faith TikTok asked, how do you win Happy Mail? Just showing up here and commenting. We're watching both screens and picking a winner. And so um, we're just randomly like scrolling and just picking a name. Are you freehanding that or do you have lines? Oh, I have lines. Let's, let me show you up close. So if you just logged on here, you might not have known. But underneath the wood is this, can you see the cardinal? You can kind of see it, right? On TikTok, now you can see it. The lines are there, and I'm just painting inside the lines. Even the word hello is right here. You may not be able, you can see the H a little bit. Um, we're going to paint inside the lines to put this design on there. So this will be what the finished design looks like. If you want to get the printable template for this, you can get it at shopdoorhangers.com or the link in my bio. I also put the direct link up above. You can get the template to cut out your own piece or to use on a laser machine. If you have a Glowforge or a Thunder Laser or something. But if you want to just buy the wooden piece from us and have us send it to you and you just sit and paint, you can do that too. Your mom loves cardinals. This would be a wonderful gift for somebody for Christmas that loves cardinals. The Muppets Christmas Carol. I forgot about that one. <gasps> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Y'all got them excited about that movie. We're all going to start watching Christmas movies now after this is over. Okay, what's next? We got to do some snow on everything. I think I'll do that last. And then the Cardinals just got to be painted red. So I'm just going to use this same tomato red because it was covering really, really well. All right, Susan Parker says to give us a good laugh. She couldn't figure out why we were giving away happy meals. Oh, <laughs> that's my southern accent for happy mail, like snail mail. <laughs> we're going to send you some snail mail. Maybe that's what we should start calling it. We should just call it snail mail. You want to get snail mail? But they, that sounds something, I, even with my accent, that sounds weird, too. Junk mail. <laughs> just don't have an accent. Yeah. You don't think I have an accent? No, lose the accent. Lose, oh, I can't lose the accent. I would have to go take, like, acting classes to learn how to lose that accent. Acting classes. You know how they, like, actresses yeah. and actors. Addiction lessons. Y'all know the actress Molly Sims? No. She's from my hometown. She used to have a country accent, but she took classes to learn to lose it. So she could sound like she was from anywhere. I am just using this little flat tip brush and going along the lines in here to paint our bird. Jennifer wants to know what kind of laser cutter you have. She thinks she needs one in her life. Oh, I have a Thunder Laser Nova 24 and I love it. And I just stuck my arm in the paint. Um... I have an affiliate link for it, so if you decide to get one, I will happily share my affiliate link for it with you. If you have questions about it, feel free to text me. I can answer any of your questions in text. That would probably be easier than doing it right here. And I'm just outlining my bird, and then I'm going to just fill it in. And then the lines for the feathers and stuff, I'll put those on last using like a paint pen or a round tip paintbrush. You know they say when a cardinal comes to visit during the winter, it's good luck. That it's a loved one it's saying a loved hello. One. It's a loved I have one. heard that. Uh, Stacy says, I'm excited to get to watch you. I have always have to do the replay. Well, Stacy, I'm glad you're here. Hello. <laughs> Joni says, I sound like you a little too. I'm from South Carolina. The Carolina people have a, a different mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. because we lived in North Carolina for about a year and a half. And they have a, I don't even know how to explain it. 
they say things, I don't know, you guys have a more of a southern bell sort of sound. Your, your O's sound differently. I don't know how to explain it, but I adore people from North Carolina, South Carolina. Like, I, we lived there, and I could have lived there for the rest of my life had it not been for all of our family that's here in Kentucky. I loved it over there. We were near Cherry Point, North Carolina, because my husband was in the Marine Corps back then. I love how the red pops on this blue. It's very pretty. Well, let's dry it. We gotta do one more coat of red, and then um, we'll start doing the other details of his face and the feathers. <laughs> you are Southern Bells. <laughs> Hi, Jessica, glad you were able to catch me on your lunch. Um, somebody said, how would you add the, the bird and the branches without a Glowforge? Um, okay, that's a great question. You could use a printable template. Let me kind of show you. Here's an example of one that's not this shape, but it's a different one. So you download it, it's a PDF. You print it out, tape it together, and then you use something called carbon paper or graphite paper. Um, you lay it underneath the paper, but on top of your wood, and you trace, and it transfers the graphite to the wood so that when you pick this up, it looks like the design is drawn on your wood. So what you could do, even if you can't cut your own shapes, you could go out and buy a wooden round and you could lay this template on the wooden round and trace it on there and you would just have to make your tree branch a little longer to make it look like it's going off the edge of the wood. So that's what our printable templates are. Lots of, no, no. I just knocked a paintbrush that had red paint on it off in the floor. Got red paint on my jeans and on the floor. So we're gonna have to do some stain removal I'm going to use a baby wipe to get the worst of it up right now. Is it in her hair? No, it's not in my hair. <laughs> it's on the floor. Shocker. <laughs> Down here. Is it on the shirt? <laughs> this poor craft room carpet is going to have to be replaced one of these days anyways. Hopefully we can put in some hardwood floors or something one day. <sighs> what kind of paper do you use to print the templates? Cheap copy paper. Uh, the heat gun is called a craft heat tool. It's linked in my Amazon favorites. You can find those at Amazon forward slash or Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Southern Adornments Decor. All right, painting one more coat of this tomato red on top of our bird because I can still slightly see some of our splatter paint speckles showing through the red. So I'm covering those up. And then we'll start adding the details is the fun part. Somebody was watching me. Uh, I think her name was Crystal. I was trying to remember who it was. Was watching me on during our Christmas tree cake workshop the other day and I was messing up left and right making a bow and she said I think this is the most like raw uh, and authentic version of you that we've gotten yet. <laughs> and I said well I always try to be real and authentic on my video. She goes well I know you do. She said but just getting to see you mess up so many times. <laughs> she said it was so relatable and, and made me feel, you know, a little bit less alone. And I said, well, so do I just need to start messing up more often? And then unintentionally yesterday when I was painting in the Painters Clubhouse, I was messing up constantly. I mean, we made such a mess. I dropped paint on the floor just like I did a minute ago, only it was a paint bottle. So I mess up too, you guys. I just, sometimes I'm not on camera when I do it. <laughs> Uh, Joni says, this is one of my favorites I've seen you paint. Thank you, Joni. I don't want to get rid of my Kentucky accent, though. I love it. it it's, um, it's unique or it's special, I guess. It makes me proud to be from Kentucky. All right, I got to put a little bit more on my berries, too, because I can still see the splatter paint through the red. I'm just doing a quick second coat on the areas where I can see you'll see the splatter paints. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to get a round tip brush and some black paint, and we're going to paint, actually, no, let's paint the beak first. What color? It's kind of an orange color. I'm going to use this one. It's a patio paint. It means it covers better because it's got a little bit of a sealer built into it. And this color is called pumpkin. I'm just going to use this for the color of the cardinal's beak. It's not going to take very much, so I'm just dr dipping it directly out of the bottle. 
and I'm putting it on pretty generous, kind of thick, because I want to get a quick first coat on here that covers really well. I'm gonna switch brushes though, because this little round tip brush is leaving brush strokes everywhere. Okay, putting it on thick might have been a mistake because now I'm going to get a mess here. Explain why you're not splattering after you're done. Okay, so we splattered first. The reason we did that is because I did not want splatter all over my bird. Um, I wanted the bird to look like she flew in and just landed right on this branch and didn't have snow all over her. And she's kind of sheltered by the tree. So I didn't want, I just didn't want splatter all over the bird. That's the main reason. We could still add a little bit of splatter to, on top of our branches and stuff. And just try not to get it on the bird if we want some on the branches. So in hindsight, I could have painted the, the branch first and then splattered. That way the branch would at least have snow splattered on it. But you know, I do make mistakes. <laughs> um, do you seal it when it's done? Yes, I like to spray it with um, Deco Art Triple Thick Spray. I've also used um, Valspar. Is it Valspar? No, Rust-Oleum um, Clear Lacquer. Is someone taking pictures in the background? Yeah, <laughs> they are. Um, it's for our our uh, blog. Okay, we gotta let that dry for a few more minutes before we can put our orange on there. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint the black of um, the face. So I've got a little round tip brush and I'm going to paint everything except the eyeball that's right here. So the round tip brush is good because it allows me to kind of control exactly where I'm putting the paint so I can kind of just trace the area that I want to fill. So I go around the edge and then I fill in the middles. Shan's going to get an action shot, so I'm going to paint nice and slow. I have to paint this area slow anyways, just to make sure I've got um, good control of where I'm putting the paint, because I don't want it getting all over everything, messing up my bird. I'm trying to be careful and not get it all over the eyeball. I think that looks pretty good. Now I've got to paint the eye white. The white that I had in here was real watered down, so I was going to get some fresh white. Uh, yeah, so the, the tree branch is called dark chocolate. That was the color. And then we did a little bit of black streaked in, and we're going to add some snow to it here in a little bit. So now I'm just painting the eye of the cardinal white and then we'll add some black on top of it for the actual pupil of the eye. Y'all wanna do one more Happy Mail? What kind of questions should we ask? What's your favorite Christmas song? Let's do one over mm -hmm. TikTok. Okay, this time we're gonna pick somebody watching yeah. on TikTok. Tell us your favorite Christmas song. I would love to hear your favorite Christmas song if you're watching on Facebook too, though. What is mine? Hmm. Don't say right here. it. Facebook will block you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't think that was the reason we got blocked the other day, though. But it would have been funny if it was. Uh, let's see. The eye is black here in the center. And then there's just a little bit of white peeking through. So I'm going to see if I can just paint around the little area that's supposed to stay white. Oh, there's my person. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I love that one. That's my favorite. Uh, somebody said, baby, it's cold outside. That's a good one, too. Jingle Bell Rock. I do like that one. I love those classics, like the old ones. They're banning babies Grandma cold outside. I know. The cancel culture. Grandma got rid of them. Grandma got rid of them. Shan's answer for her Chris, favorite Christmas movie and favorite Christmas song are the same. Grandma got run over by her. Okay, okay. Ma Michael Blue Blue <laughs> She can't Blue, say his Blue name. Bay. Michael Blue uh, uh, Yeah. Yeah, I love I mean, listening. Just buy any of his Christmas songs. <laughs> just Michael Blue yeah. You yeah. have me there. <laughs> yep. 
Um, another great one is Kelly Pickler's uh, Carolina Christmas, I think is what it's called. If you got, it's a very, it's not a very widely known one, but she wrote it in honor of her grandmother who raised her because she was from North Carolina. And it is, it is like a, just a beautiful, heartfelt Christmas, uh, Christmas song. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I like that one too. Okay. Our winner is Luna Mama One on TikTok. So send me an email at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com or DM me your address and I'll send you some happy mail. No chicken nuggets and fries included. <laughs> Not a happy meal. Happy mail. Okay, we've got our bird. We need to paint our letters and then do the finishing touches. And so I'm going to switch to a round tip brush for my lettering. Um, and I'm going to pick... The, I want to use the Victorian blue for our letters. This is such a beautiful color by Deco Art. It reminds me of like denim blue jeans. I'm going to use that for, whoops, I almost put it in with my white. I'm going to use that for our lettering. And the round tip brush that I'm using has lots of bristles on the end. Um, congratulations, Luna Mama. She's like, ah! Um, and I'm just painting inside the lines. I'm not freehanding this lettering, so don't be deceived. I am pretty good at hand lettering, but I'm not this good. And I'm gonna try to do this fairly quickly because I feel like we have gone on and on on this Facebook Live talking and chatting it up and waiting for paint to dry. So I'm gonna try to move kind of quickly here. So for the thin strokes, I'm just not pressing all the bristles down flat on the wood. I'm just kind of letting the tip of the paintbrush glide and for the thicker areas, I'm actually pressing down, letting all the bristles spread out to widen the stroke. Takes practice, don't give up. Also a trick to hand lettering is that even though you may use, you know, go one direction when you write your words with like a pen or a pencil, when you're actually painting them with a paintbrush, sometimes you may want to go the opposite direction with your paintbrush. Stri you know, strike, uh, do the brush, brush stroke up instead of down just to get a thinner, a thinner stroke. telling me to smile for the pictures again. Okay, let's do one down here. There we go. Am I still, I was, I was afraid I'd gotten out of the camera frame on this side. Okay. The, the L side of the, or the long stroke on this side of these L's, I'm having to kind of do like two strokes just to get it covered because it's a pretty wide part of the letter. And then the O. I get quiet when I'm doing hand lettering because it's like I feel like I need to not breathe or I'll mess up. I'm going to concentrate. By the way, somebody on our Facebook Live or something the other day was asking if we still had gift guide, if we were doing a gift guide this year for what to buy um, for Christmas for somebody who loves painting and crafts and door hanger painting. Um, and we have updated last year's gift guides on the website. So if you want to check those out, you can find those on our blog at Southern Adornments Decor. And you can send that to your husband or your family members for easy shopping. That way they can figure out what to send, what to get you. I'm dipping in just a little bit of white and blue right now, and I'm kind of doing like a, a, sh or a highlight on the long downstrokes of our letters, just to kind of give them like a two-tone sort of look. Works best if your lettering is still wet, but if, if it's not, just get your brush just a little bit of water on it so the paint flows. And just keep spreading it out till you like the way it looks. 
if I want to do something right through there too. And if you get too much, get a little bit of the original blue and just kind of go back over it. I feel like this side needs a little bit more. This is a fun way to add a little bit of dimension to your letters. I'm adding just a little bit of blue and a little bit of white on the long downstrokes. Shading on your lettering. This is tricky to do if, if you're doing like small words, but since this word is so big, it's easier to, to shade it in. Okay, I like that. Let me show you what it looks like. See how the letters kind of look shaded and there's a little bit of a highlight? <laughs> Karen says you're so good at painting lettering. So this is what we have so far. I keep wanting to hold it like this <laughs> because the word is like sideways and I have to remind myself, nope, goes like this. Um, makes the letters look frosty from the snow. Yes, that was what I was going for. All right, so now we can add our finishing touches of like snow. I may wanna use a little bit more splatter paint and do just a little bit of speckles of snow on the branches. So I'm gonna get my paintbrush out of my water cup. I'm getting a lot of the water off of it right now. <laughs> Shan's stepping back. I need a splash guard. <laughs> I need a yeah. splash guard for the photographer. I'm picking up just a little bit on my brush. Oh, can you grab me a paper towel? I think they're in the top of that cabinet because I just realized like, the paintbrush has dirty paint water on it, and I don't want dirty paint waters. Don't oh, rip me off. Oh, I've got sorry. one handed here. I don't want to drop this in the floor and make a bigger mess. Um, so I'm going to get most of my paint water out of my brush first, because you definitely don't want to splatter dirty paint water on your project. All right, let's try that again. Drip in the water. I'm going to get as much off as I can. And then I'm just going to tap just enough to kind of add a little bit of snow on our berries. Oh, I just realized I missed a teeny tiny little twig that goes to a berry. Oh. I didn't realize it until I was looking at it up close. Goes right there. And then adds them up here. And since I'm doing it really close to the project, it makes it to where I'm not getting it on the bird as much. There's just a teensy bit on her back. I think instead of using the paint pen, I want to try using my paint brush to do my my bird's details too. So I'm going to take some black and I'm going to water it down just a little, just a few drops. Just enough to make it flow a little better. And I'm using a little round tip brush and we're just going to go over the, the etched lines that are already on our door hanger. The reason I'm doing this with a brush instead of a paint pen is I wanted it to look a little bit more artistic. And sometimes with the paint pen, you can't quite get that look. It looks more like uh, perfect lines, and I don't necessarily want perfect lines. Smirk. <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing them. They're there, but let me see. The, the wing goes up this way. And then curves back. So let me do the outline of the wing first, and that might make this easier. Spark again. There we go. To get a good one. Yeah. And so I'm just doing these kind of wispy. Oops. That paint was still wet. I'm just doing these kind of wispy to make the, the feathers look a little bit more feathery. They're not going to be perfect, but that's actually going to make our bird look better. There we go. I like that. And then coming down here, got to add some to the tail. My bristles are starting to separate, which is actually fine for this design, but because the, the feathery look kind of helps. It's kind of frustrating when you don't want it to. All right. Look how pretty. Don't forget about the beak. So see how adding the lines with the round tip brush kind of made them look a little bit less uniform, whereas with a paint pen, all your lines are the exact same width, and it's hard to get that um, feathered sort of look. 
we're, we're switching brushes. This brush is just going rogue on me. It was like the bristles were starting to separate and get annoying. And sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Uh, and then the beak has a little line going right down from the center. So I'm just going to outline it like that. Um, I think that's all. I don't really want to do any on the berries or the tree branches because I've already added some shading there. So I may just take something and kind of add a little bit of snow. Let's see. I'm trying to pick a good brush here. Let me just pick a round tip brush, a big round tip brush. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of our watered down white. And I'm just gonna kind of use it to kind of dab some snow on the tops of these little berries. And I've already done it here by getting my arm in the <laughs> splatter paint <laughs> and making a mess with it, so oh well. I'm just kind of dabbing and making it look like the snow is starting to pepper and, and land on the branches. Something else fun you could do is use something called snow tex. Um, it's kind of like a texture and you can add that to your branches to kind of make them look like they've actually got like dimensional snow sitting on them. I'm just really lightly dabbing the white on here and I'm also kind of doing it unevenly. So there's some little areas that have more than others to make it look like the snow was kind of gathering and piling in those little spots. Forgot these berries. Okay, I feel like that's good. Let me show you. Thank you, somebody said it was beautiful. Thank you. I make it look easy. I've been doing it a long time, so. If you want to paint one like this, all you have to do is go get the printable template or buy the wood piece and you can paint one at home. Um, the lettering on this one has a little bit of snow, but I think I kind of feel like we did that with the highlighting and I don't want to add any more to it. So what do you think? Do you like the little snowy branches? Let me show you up close so you can see. Um, any other questions? Pat says modeling paste applied to the branches with paint would give them texture. Hmm, I hadn't tried that. Thank you, Marla and Doris. Thank you guys for watching today. I had fun painting with you. If you want to um, join me live on Friday, I'm going to go live at 9.30 a.m. Central. All you have to do is text me and I will send you a text notification letting you know. Um, the wood I use, I use quarter inch revolution plywood to answer your question. All right, y'all have a great afternoon. See you next time. Bye, y'all. Oh, and don't forget to get on the Black Friday wait list. We mentioned that at the beginning if you want to hear more about it.